Hey you all, Farmer Jesse here, and with garlic bulb season on the way, I figured a video breaking down the many ways to market garlic that notably require little to no actual processing was in order. Because garlic is much more versatile and more prolific market crop than it ever gets credit for. Um, and so we're going to break down some of the mini edible and some of the just beautiful things you can do uh, with the garlic plant. And also, I'm going to discuss a little experiment I'm doing with tunnel garlic. So let's do it. First things first, if you're not subscribed to this video, this video, if you're not subscribed to this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, you're awesome. And if you gain something from this video or any of our videos, you can always support our work at patreon.com slash no toll growers. All right, let's dive in. First, garlic is one of my absolute favorite crops to grow. Uh, and eat and send to vampires as a gag. I really love to look out in the garden in the spring when everything else is, you know, this size or this size or this size and see this large mass of green plants. And economically, garlic has a lot of potential. So let's go through the garlic season and talk about some of the many things we get out of this plant, um, starting with green garlic. Green garlic is an underappreciated delicacy. It's also called spring garlic or baby garlic or young garlic. It is pretty much what it sounds like, immature garlic. There is no real bulb yet. It looks sort of like a baby leek or large green onion. And honestly, it tastes slightly more oniony than garlic usually does because remember all of these are in the allium family. Um, but why would you pull up the garlic plant before the garlic is mature? Well, you wouldn't really. That is to say, you don't pull up your good garlic for green garlic. So you can either plant a bed at a slightly greater density than you would for garlic bulbs, specifically for the purpose of green garlic, say one bulb every four inches for green garlic, uh, opposed to our usual like eight inches apart for bulb garlic. Um, or you use green garlic as an excuse to thin your patch of small or double bulbs like this. Now, you can use whatever garlic you have, but the ideal version of green garlic has a really large blanch on the crop. The white that you see there is the more usable part of the crop. Um, it is a little, the, the green part is a little bit too fibrous to be an enjoyable thing to chew on, uh, though it works fine for flavor, you know, for flavoring soups and stocks and that sort of stuff. Uh, that blanch, that's why planting a bed specifically for green garlic is better than thinning a patch. Uh, though, of course, both qualify. You know, if you're planting it specifically for green garlic, you can really go for that blanch as opposed to planting it a little bit less deep and going for more of a uh, bulb. I've tried hilling up green garlic to improve that blanch, um, which works okay. And I've buried them fairly deep in the past as well, um, which is also relatively effective. But it seems to me that just a nice layer of mulch, of carbonaceous mulch, is the best approach for that blanch. Either way, we bundle what we harvest uh, in bunches of four or three as they grow bigger. And then we sell that with a big sign that says green garlic, because again, they look so much like leeks, people will mistake them for leeks. Um, now, it's easy to want to go overboard on bunch size but because they're so small, but remember that these could be full-size bulbs, so charge accordingly. Um, we sell those bunches of four or three uh, at $3 a piece or two for $5, and that's pretty much the model we use across every one of our crops, and it sells really well that way. Before we go on to the next crop, if you would like more details about our garlic production, you can check out the Living Soil Handbook. I do a complete garlic breakdown in there. And if you buy the book from notillgrowers.com, the proceeds go into making you more content like this. So, win-win. Okay, so shortly after green garlic season comes garlic scape season. This is only relevant if you are planting hardneck garlic varieties, um, because the softnecks do not put up a flower or scape that the hardneck garlics do, but softneck garlics do have positive attributes that hardnecks don't, so we'll talk about those shortly. Um, elephant garlics, which are more closely related to leeks than garlic, uh, are more like a hardneck. They do put up a scape, uh, which makes a really beautiful cut flower, by the way, but the scape is simply the young stock of the garlic flower. It's often called pigtails or garlic curls. I actually don't know if anybody calls them garlic curls, but anyway, right before the plant begins bulbing out, garlic puts up its flower. Um, for us in Kentucky, zone 6B, this happens in May. For others, it may be earlier or later. I'm not going to go too much into garlic scapes because I did this whole video about it uh, last year. So 
If you planted hardneck garlic and want a thorough rundown, including when to harvest those scapes, because it does have an effect on your yield, check that out. Uh, very cool crop, and I make a delicious ferment out of them every year. Plus, it's a fun filler on the table. So then, after garlic scapes, you have the garlic pinnacle, fresh garlic. I live for fresh garlic. There is just nothing like it. It's super sweet and juicy. It hasn't developed many of the bitter notes yet. Um, bitter notes that do come with some notable health benefits, but uh, essentially fresh garlic is the stage when garlic has begun to um, develop its bulb, but has not started putting the hard paper-ish wrapping around each of the cloves. In fact, you can see the cloves forming, but that paper is still white and soft and even a little bit edible. This is just a very early stage of garlic, the pre-cured version. It's also a very sensitive state of garlic, so you have to be very careful uh, with it so as not to bruise the bulbs, but you can bring the whole plant to the market if you'd like, or cut it and you know, sell it like regular bulb garlic. You know, cured garlic we keep in a dry storage area, but the fresh garlic we do put in the refrigerator just to maintain that freshness for as long as possible. Because like I said, I kind of live for it. Then of course comes the big garlic harvest that we uh, put up and cure. I did a video about garlic harvesting and curing that you can watch here. And again, more detailed breakdown of spacing and harvesting in the living soil handbook, but garlic but as garlic ages, it cures and it develops different nutritional and thus flavor characteristics. And that's when we get what most of us think of as garlic, cured garlic. Not much to say here. This is a stable form of garlic. We bring a heaping basket uh, of it every week to every market. And it sells really well for us because garlic is such a great staple crop. Um, people will buy some carrots and some lettuce and throw in a bulb of garlic almost every time. Uh, you know, it's very easy to sell. For curing, we used to cut it all off of the stock and cure it in front of a fan. But last year we tried hanging it all and curing it on the curing it while it was still on the plant. Uh, both worked fine. But I think I now prefer the stock on approach because it just reduces the risk of disease and pest damage. Um, then we just cut the bulbs off as we need them. Uh, we sell all of our bulb garlic at three dollars a bulb or two for five. Yes, three dollars a piece unapologetically so. This crop takes a lot of money to get started and takes up a lot of garden space for six months in our region. Um, you cannot make money selling it for much less than that, in my opinion. Uh, elephant garlic we also grow and sell as a roasting garlic because it is a little intense to use fresh. I feel like that should be pointing up. I do love to spread it on toast when you roast it. Um, but what, we really, what we're really after is that scape. It's really pretty. It's an edible flower, um, so we can essentially sell those for a dollar a stem or six for five dollars. And honestly, you could probably fetch more money for those than that. Um, for us, the resulting elephant garlic is honestly big enough, even leaving the scape on. We'd, so any loss of yield is probably there, but it's negligible. And we ultimately make like four dollars a bulb that way or more. Um, now, garlic seed is another option for garlic selling garlic seed that is, um, especially since it can fetch upwards of $25 a pound at the moment. So though, though some states do have kind of strict laws about selling seed, uh, so make sure to you know, comply and just look at your local laws uh, before going too big on this idea. Now, if you're in a tropical or semi-subtropical environment, you may not be able to grow hard neck garlics, uh, which require 40 days under 40 degrees for them to properly bulb up. Instead, you may want to focus on soft neck varieties. Soft neck garlics are better storage garlics in general, though the cloves are smaller and the flavor, in my opinion, is not always as interesting as the hard necks. However, soft neck garlics will last 12 months versus six to eight months with most hard neck garlics. So it's nice to grow a variety or two if you can. Uh, soft necks can also be woven, weaven, weaved into beautiful wreaths like these from our friends at County Rail Farm in Montana. I love those things. And that could be a good fall and winter value add. Uh, we no longer grow a soft neck ourselves, but have been threatening to get back into it specifically for the wreath and braid game. Um, essentially, you harvest and cure the soft neck like you would any garlic. And when the season slows down and you have a little bit more time, you can start braiding them together. Um, so that's a really cool option.
Also, there's things like garlic powder and garlic bread and garlic, all these millions of other garlic products that you could do with garlic, but I wanted to give you a good outline of what was possible with garlic with little or no processing needed. Um, as promised, last thing I wanted to sort of mention was that I'm starting to experiment more with garlic in our caterpillar tunnels um, so that I could have full bulb garlic a few weeks earlier than I usually do. Now, the trick is that garlic still needs those 40 days under 40 degrees. So I have to leave the sides open and the garlic uncovered to make sure that that is possible, um, which makes growing more sensitive stuff in the same area less possible. But at this moment, this experiment uh, appears to be headed in the direction of a success. These plants are several inches taller and presumably a few weeks ahead of my field crops. If it works, I may specifically get tunnels for a section of my garlic simply to be as early as possible to market because at $2.50 or $3 a bulb, each bed of garlic is worth somewhere between $1,100 and $1,300, which is good if I can get the entire bed cleared and sold by June for midsummer crops. So anyway, that's the goal. Let me know if you've had success growing garlic in a tunnel. Any other thoughts you have on garlic production is also welcome or garlic crops. What are some ways you sell garlic that may be unique? Otherwise, like this video if you like this video and make sure to subscribe to this channel. Also, consider joining our Patreon page at patreon.com slash growers. That is where I get the input for the videos we make here. Pick up a copy of my book, The Living Soil Handbook from notillgrowers.com. If for no other reason than to say thanks for these videos and of course, to encourage me to keep doing them. Also, this video was paid for in part by a grant from Southern Sayre. Is that it? I think that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye. You kind of use, you can use green garlic or the alternative is that you use green garlic as a 